Hi, Carol. Hello there. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine. I'm driving, so I wanted to go ahead and get connected before I got started. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, Better safe so than sorry, Hot Lost Connection. <laughs> You bet. So anyway, so I just, yeah, I'm just, I'm early. So no need to, no, you go ahead and do what you need to do and I'll just drive. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.
Hi. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Marty. Hello. 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 Marty, did you get a chance to look at my edits? I did. I incorporated almost all of them or, or all of them. Good. I'm glad I could be of some help. Yes, it was helpful. I. Yeah. Cool. Good. I'm going to try to have a meeting next uh, Tuesday evening. Seven o'clock over at Rockhurst Community Center. Uh, I'm gonna need to pick up my sister at the airport at six thirty. Okay, there you go. Well, rats. <laughs> well, let's do this again next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll be there'll be plenty of things happening this year. I think. I'm sure. They just. Uh, Rockers just well, sent me an email. They have an AmeriCorps volunteer who's going to do environmental stuff at Rockers. Uh huh. And so I sent them a. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> have them come learn. <laughs> yeah, or help, help. <laughs> A washing machine or no. not on my end. I think he was driving too. <laughs> There's a couple of uh, people are gonna join in the driving, so we'll see. All right. Just tell them to keep their windows closed. Is there a way to open for full screen or? Yeah. I guess I'm stretching it with the arrows. Hi. Hello. Hello, Laura. Hey, I'm leaving. I'm going to be driving shortly, but I'm going to be listening best I can, OK? All right. Yes. That's one minus point. <laughs> Marty, I've been meaning to ask for the longest time over your, I guess it's your right shoulder, is that this huge wood carving or it looks oh, like a wood carving? It's it's actually brown paper bags. It's is a it great, real? great peacemaker from the Iroquois tradition and uh, he uh, he went from village to village and taught them not to be uh, cannibals and and to create a, a representative democracy a kind of a ah, and who did the sculpture um, David Mallon David Mallon that name sounds familiar for some reason well they had I think they were in plumbing I don't know whether they were in plumbing, Dorfman was probably re related to him, but. I know Dorfman, they had a place downtown. Right. And he's a sculptor, I think he's out in, uh, well, out in Colorado, I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you, you've had that piece for a long time, I, say, I, I think. Yeah, it was a 1992 uh, Earth Day play and we, we we had him and four four other giant puppets, twenty foot tall. <laughs> oh yeah, I was there. Absolutely. Oh, okay, down at the uh, uh, small. No. Yeah. No, no. This was down. This one was down. Um, 
at Liberty Memorial, that little park there, Pin Valley Park, or ah, okay, I blew I blew that one. Okay. Well, you were there for others because we did have a lot there at. Uh, oh, I was there for mo I've been there for most of them. Uh huh. I think so. I believe it's five right now, so I believe we have quorum. Carol just uh, joined us and Michael. Well, let's see. One, two, three. We do have a quorum. Let's get started. So how many people do we have now? We only have nine. Wow. Dropping like flies. Well, um, yes. <laughs> Not really dropping like, like flies, but people have um, moved on to other things. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's go ahead and start with the agenda. Uh, there are so few of us here. Uh, it looks like probably everybody knows everybody pretty well. Um, let's go ahead and do look over the minutes. Can we have? Um, are there any additions or corrections to the July minutes? Hearing none, can we have a motion to approve as drafted? This is Michael Kelly on motion to approve. Uh, second. I'll second, Scott. OK, if there's anybody opposed, put your hand up. OK, we're going to count that past. Um, are there any additions or corrections to the August minutes? This is Carol Mackin, and I have a change to the minutes on the August 10th meeting. OK. Uh, after reading the minutes and watching the recording, I request the removal of the sentence stating that Evergy does not want to be seen as supportive of our climate plan. Oh, Evergy okay. Evergy participated, <clears throat> excuse me, in the creation of the plan through our representative on the Climate Protection Steering Committee, as well as our participation in the community work sessions. Evergy has publicly stated its support for many of the initiatives included in the plan. The statement is inaccurate and needs to be removed from the minutes. OK, um, can I have a motion to adopt the minutes as amended? I will make that a motion. And a second. Come on, guys. I'll, yeah, I'll second, Scott. Thank you, Scott. OK, anybody opposed, raise your hand. OK, good. Um, Carol, we will all see that the minutes are um, changed according to that motion before they are posted. All right, thank you. You are welcome. Um, our next item of business is appointments to the Environmental Management Commission. And I have sent you all some correspondence about this. Um, this is something that ha has been on my mind for quite a while, but I didn't want to jump in with this when we were right in the middle of trying to get the climate protection plan adopted. Um, so I didn't want to add any additional activity at that moment. But now I really think we need to get our membership up. And for those of you who saw the um, memo that I sent out, uh, Carol, Mackin is our one recently appointed commissioner. All the rest of us are serving expired terms. And there are in addition eight vacancies. And so I have tried to encourage the mayor and his appointment staff to take a hard look at that and to move forward with appointments. And I have also been needling some of you 
directly and indirectly to encourage people to apply. And I think we have had some success and some interest from people in applying for membership. Um, that's about all I have to say about it. I am hoping that you all will continue to scratch your head. Um, think about people who maybe could contribute to the commission and will be interested in doing so. Uh, Carol made a suggestion about maybe we should have an additional utility representative, which I thought was a good suggestion. But one of the things she um, also suggests, I'm, I'm speaking for you, Carol, so you can interrupt me at any time, was that we should take a broader, a, a broader view of utilities and consider telecommunications and some of the other things. Carol? Yes. Anything? No, no, that's that's accurate. That was one of the things and I apologize. I'm driving, so I don't want to um, have too much road noise behind. But uh, no, that's one of the things that I think we need to expand in looking at that. And we've got a lot of telecommunication folks that probably um, might be good people to have on this committee. Well, and, and in particular, if you know of someone who would have a heart for this kind of work, um, they're going to need encouragement to apply. They're not going to just um, run across us in their everyday experience. So each of you, please keep an eye out for. So, mm -hmm. hey, Scott, Carol, you have, just, uh -huh. or Car <laughs> Carol and Carol, I can just say That's Carol right. and I can, I can get you both. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so for the sake of discussion, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of guessing that telecommunications angle is would be aimed at like understanding how smart cities network and um, things like that would be set up, you know, for for improving water and energy use efficiencies across city communications networks. Is that kind of what some of the ideas you were suggesting with with how telecommunications would fit in? Or I'm I'm just curious as to if you could explain that more. No, that's correct. It's something like um, smart cities. They do a lot with the, you know, with telecommunications and Verizon has done a lot, you know, some of the other communi um, communication companies. And so that was just one of my suggestions when I was having a conversation with Carol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. I got, I got a suggestion from the water department um, from West Mender. I got um, a couple of suggestions from some of you about people that you thought might be um, good. We don't have an environmental lawyer on our crew anymore, and that was something that we have had in the past. I did reach out to Jeremy about getting a green building professional, and he found someone he could recommend. So that's what I'm kind of after, is for people to look to um, their networks and people they know that would like to engage with the city. And uh, Michael, your hands up. Michael, did you want to say something? Maybe he just has his hand up. Um, I don't have a lot more to say about this, except to um, encourage all of you. Molly suggested a fellow who is a PhD student in economics, who has a lot of good perspectives about equity. So I just think we need to stretch our imagination and think about all the people that might contribute to the commission and um, understand that we probably need to come up with multiple choices for the mayor so that he feels like he can uh, make appointments with confidence and uh, have some discretion in who he appoints. So with that said, unless mm -hmm. somebody else wants to talk, I'm going to turn it over to Andy. I'll just brainstorm one other idea there with you, Carol, that uh -huh. um, Molly has also mentioned to me there's a professor 
who works in um, uh, alternative cement, um, concrete formulations and stuff, you know, like green cement, you know, so it's, so it's a, you know, the manufacturing pro processes and stuff for lower carbon or something to that effect. Um, I've not met him, but I've wanted to. And that also might be somebody if, if you've got some discussion with her about. Okay, that would be great. Well, if you see her before I talk to her, you might mention it and see if she thinks yep. that would be somebody who would be interested in serving. Yep, sure thing. Thank you. Um, Andy, are you ready? Yeah, sure. Just uh, just seeing if there's any other comments from the commissioners before I proceed. Well, for me, it's just sort of a cheerleader comment. Please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right. Okay, so um, doing the OQ update. Um, so we'll start out with the Climate Protection Resilience Plan. As you all know, last month was an exciting month for us, uh, particularly the last week or so. Um, so on August 25th, I guess it was the day it happened uh, after two, two years plus uh, of working on that project and um, the council um, passed uh, or they approved the resolution uh, adopting the Climate Protection Resilience Plan. Uh, the vote was 11 to 1, uh, which was very nice to see. Um, as any of you that were kind of sitting through those, the testimony in the committee, as well as um, you know, when I went to the legislative session, it was exciting times. Uh, uh, didn't know which direction it was going to go at times. Um, so it was quite a learning experience for a lot of us. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, it passed, and uh, we're we're ready to move on to the next phase. Um, so with that, uh, Laura uh, has been busy uh, kind of looking at what's in the plan. Uh, we're all been kind of looking at that. Next steps, um, we're going to be coordinating with our steering committee um, in terms of the short-term implementation plan, and what does that mean uh, starting out? So the plan does have suggested actions. Uh, in terms of moving forward in the short term. So we're kind of looking at that. Um, however, with that, keeping in mind, um, we are a little short staff still. So kind of circling back to our staffing issue, uh, we are short two positions. Uh, we're still short Jerry's old position, the sustainability coordinator position, and the, sus the sustainability analyst position. Uh, Chris has moved on. He took a promotion to go to the water department. So with that, we posted two positions to be filled. Um, one of those was closed. Actually, both are closed. We got our our list back for the coordinator. We'll be doing some interviews here before too long um, for both positions. So hopefully we'll get some staff in here to help us uh, moving forward. So with that, that's um, looking at uh, what, what do we do with a plan on the short term side? Um, this is already butting up against the budget cycle for the city. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll be having to prepare our budget documents for the next fiscal year, starting May 1st of next year. So we kind of have to look ahead, um, look at our current budget, uh, see how we can spend the money that we have now, um, as well as trying to think ahead about what we're going to need in terms of dollars in the future, uh, as well as maybe possible additional staff positions because there's absolutely no way with the staffing I've got now that we can take on this climate plan and implement as much that's in there that falls on the city to, uh, with, the, with the existing staff that I've got. So maybe looking at an additional position or two uh, budget request for staffing. So uh, a lot going on with the plan. Um, we're looking forward to our next steering committee meeting coming up here. Uh, I think it's coming up on Monday of next week. <clears throat> so. Um, We'll be talking with them and, and uh, discussing next steps. So I don't want to get too far down the road, um, being that we're all still kind of recovering from the process of, of August uh, the last month. And it, it's, um, you know, we, we do appreciate, uh, I think we've put out some emails and we've talked to lots of folks, but I, I can't say enough to everybody that helped us um, push this across the finish line. Um, I can tell just, you know, sitting in the seat uh, in front of council, it, it was good to have 
strong support behind us um, to help push that across the finish line. So appreciate everybody uh, that uh, participated in the process. Um, that was greatly appreciated. And I see Jerry's got his hand up before I go any further. Jerry. Um, yeah, do you have any thoughts about um, what kinds of roles the EMC might play? Well, that's a good question because I know Carol and I have often talked about that. Is what what does that look like for the EMC? Um, trying to be mindful of the role of the steering committee um, so that there isn't necessarily, you know, uh, we're we're stepping on the toes of each commission and the roles that they are both meant to to fill. So I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I think uh, the commission has always been good about covering a wide variety of issues, topics, areas. And of course, in the climate plan, we have that. I mean, there's plenty to go around for everybody. So um, I don't know. I don't have any preconceived notions. Um, it, you know, I'm, I'm happy to hear what the commission's thoughts are about how they feel they, that they should plug into the planning process. So thank you. Scott? Um, yeah. Um, my question is really more on the the final version of the plan. I know that there were some edits between the draft and the final, as well as some last minute, um, you know, edits and stuff that were worked through and uh, in committee or whatever processes there are. So where and when would a, is the final published version available? Yeah, no. Um, so Laura, if you're able to, if you're driving, don't, but I believe we just received the final edits, if not real soon. Um, Brendel's been working diligently over the past week, couple of weeks, trying to get that all put together for all of the documents that are part of this process. So um, if they're not already posted, they should be posted very shortly. OK, um, I am. I'm driving, but I'm you're on my speaker, so um, the online version of the plan is ready to go. The interactive online. I'm going to have that up on the playbook site tonight. That was one of the things I was going to do during this meeting. Um, however, all the versions of the plans were waiting on the supplemental documentation to get finalized because everything that changed in the plan, we have to make sure that we captured it in all the supplemental documentation, those changes as well. And since the final plan actually requires links to the supplemental documentation, we have to get them done and online so we can finalize the plan. So it's sort of a chicken and the egg thing. Um, so the versions that you'll see will not have the uh, supplemental documentation accessible yet. That'll probably be Friday. Oh, hope that helps. Not a, <laughs> not a problem. I'm not too pressed about it for a week. <laughs> but it is something as I talk to different colleagues once in a while, I I, I refer people to go look at the, the playbook site and and um, I'm assuming that it'll be posted for a, a reasonable length of time for, you know, for people to find. Yeah, right yeah, now my understanding is, oh, sorry. Nope, go ahead, Laura, go right ahead. No, I was going to say right now my understanding is um, the playbook site was going to go away at the end of September and we were going to have to migrate everything back to the city site, but um, it is now my understanding that planning um, is keeping that site open until the end of the year. So we should have access to that by, you know, up till the end of the year, and then we'll migrate it back to the OEQ pages. Okay. And Laura, is there anything else you would like to say um, while, while we have you on the climate plan? I don't know. If there are any other questions, I'm here to, to answer them. I'll be I'll be home in like two minutes, so okay. then I'll be back. Home. Um, and I would just say also one of the things that we're doing, and, and this is not just our office, but citywide, um, we all know that with the infrastructure bill, you know, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, the farm bill, there's certainly lots of dollars um, that will become available for a wide variety of projects, many of them aligned with the climate plan. So. Um, you know, we're, we've already started the conversations with various folks internally, um, externally, um, you know, uh, so just kind of trying to just, you know, be prepared for, uh, ha you know, having a, a go at some of that money through grants. And so the city, we've taken on two grant writers, uh, two companies, essentially, that that's what they do. 
Um, so any department in the city will have access to using those grant writers. Um, they will both not only look for opportunities for the city, but they'll also um, you know, do the application, uh, do all that type of work for us uh, along with our, our assistance. So we've got that aspect of it. Um, and then the other part of that is administration of any of the grants. Um, so we're talking with various uh, internal staff um, as they're staffing up to see who's available to help administer the grants internally, because with our office being as small as it is, it's difficult. And I'm sure as Jerry can attest, it's 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 a lot of work to uh, to um, manage a grant. And so if if we take on any number of grants for various reasons, you know, we, we we're going to need help in that regard. So and that's that's prevalent throughout the entire city. So there are conversations going on about, you know, how how does that happen? So interesting to see, you know, there, there are things going on behind the scenes to be prepared to take advantage of those funds as they become available. So any other questions about the climate plan? Oops. Marty, you're on. You're I don't on know mute. whether this uh, uh, fits here or not, but uh, I, I think maybe the the commission ought to look into weighing in on the on the farm bill. Um, you know, even though uh, we don't have our our yards are not necessarily farms, uh, but we eat the food and the agricultural practices. Uh, there's a, a real good uh, case that that they're heavily causing the climate change. So uh, by the way they treat the soil, eliminate the 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 microbes that draw down uh, carbon and uh, keep the soil uncovered with green part of the year because uh, they don't have ways figured out to um, stop the albedo, the the effect of the of the the dark soil uh, absorption of heat absorption of light turning into heat which is radiated back into the atmosphere so i think we should think about doing something that's it all right thank you marty um moving on to energy code i know a lot of you folks have been tracking that issue uh, that's been on hold for a few weeks uh, as we were deliberating and moving through the climate protection plan process. Uh, so my notes have uh, the, that will be picked up again on September 28th. Uh, so keep you posted on where that is going to go. Um, also, the um, balanced energy resolution. Uh, not sure what's going to happen to that one. There's been absolutely nothing going on behind the scenes on that one. Um, kind of hoping, I, said, well, I, I would say I would just suspect that that will probably be pulled eventually from the docket uh, now that the Climate Protection Plan has been approved. So we shall see what uh, Councilman O'Neill does with that particular resolution. Um, Solarize Kansas City is uh, plugging along. Uh, we've got... Uh, we're still um, October, the end of October is the end of the enrollment period for that particular program. Uh, we have 549 people signed up for estimates uh, uh, and assessments uh, as far as solar. Uh, so um, to date, we actually have hit final our final and lowest pricing available under the pro project. So we've, there, <clears throat> there were eight tiers of pricing and we've gone through all eight tiers and we're at the lowest possible pricing. So great opportunity to get in on solar if you're interested. We've got at least 50 contracts in place with families throughout uh, the metropolitan area that have signed or that have signed contracts to put in solar. Uh, total right now is 373 kilowatts of solar um, based on those 50 contracts. So we're certainly expecting um, by the end of the the calendar year, which is the end of when you can sign a contract, um, I'm, I'm hoping that it'll at least be double that. So we'll sell. We'll see. Um, you know, with the new 30% tax credit available, 
um, that should help. And then our lowest tiered pricing that that's in play now. So um, really good opportunities available there. So um, we are um, just moving right along on that. And I should make a quick plug. We're going to be doing a workshop um, on financing for solar installations. So if if folks are curious or have questions about how you finance solar projects, then that will be the next workshop. Um, I believe it's in the next week or two we'll have that. Um, it's on our Solarize Kansas City website, but you can sign up for that. It's like at six o'clock, six to seven or something like that. So Solarize is going along pretty good. And I guess related to that, I'm just going to throw this out there. Just I've, I've already started conversations with folks at RMI, which was our, I guess, the folks that help sponsor this program overall. Um, kind of been talking to them about what's next for Kansas City. And um, I think they have some interest as well as we do on possibly doing a similar project or program in Kansas City next year for uh, heat pump systems. So think of a bulk purchase program for heat pump systems. So we're going to um, continue those conversations, see what other cities might want to jo join us on a cohort for that. <clears throat> That's, of course, uh, in conformance with our um, climate protection resilience plan. Uh, where we were obviously uh, moving for building electrification and decarbonization. So anyhow, I'm pretty excited. That's just preliminary conversations, um, keeping my fingers crossed. But it seems like there's some excitement to keep this um, model um, of how we do this going. So anyhow, um, Scott, did you just put your hand up? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say, hey, congratulations. Um, you know, I, I read a lot of RMI stuff as it comes across my desk, and I've always liked what they do. And so that's awesome that you're working with them. I didn't realize that that's, that, that was the source of, of some of that uh, stuff you're doing there. And I've, yeah. I've read Yeah, I've they've read been up great their, in terms of technical support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the heat pump systems, that's, that's very exciting. Uh, you know, from what I understand, that's a, uh, you know, potentially significant uh, advance over traditional air conditioning. That's it, Jerry. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Uh, just a uh, a request that when you're talking about program development with RMI uh, for heat pump systems, if you could include heat pump water systems as well as HVAC, that would be, um, I think, would be appropriate. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Well, I I think that's uh, the highlights for now. Um, like I said, we're kind of in a transition period, <clears throat> just trying to um, catch up on things around the office uh, until we get our positions filled, um, and just kind of aligning ourselves with what the climate protection plan has in store for the city, as well as our grant opportunities. So. Um, and Marty, we are going to be getting back to the native grasses, uh, our native landscaping issue here, I promise. Um, so I, I've been talking with uh, folks in our neighborhoods department, um, and we, we've kind of set an internal goal of having this done and in place by next growing season or next next spring. So, uh, but that means we need to get started back on this here shortly. So just hang with me. I'll be right back with ready. you here shortly. Ready when you are. All right, I know, and I appreciate the patience. Uh, that I, just for the rest of you, we we had a really we have we got a great group working on that um, that really helped provide a lot of feedback, which we did capture, and it's just now compiling all those great ideas into a an ordinance that we can use to uh, make uh, native landscaping a little bit more um, practical in Kansas City than what's been going on. So, all right, I'll take any questions in general if there are any. Well, I've been scratching my head on the not necessarily native landscaping, but moving away from lawns. And uh, I was thinking about talking to some of the people that do lawn work in my neighborhood about whether they were willing to come in and, and overseed with fescue and clover and quit putting stuff on the ground. 
I don't know if I can talk anybody into doing that or not, but I thought it wouldn't hurt to try. Um, Marty, does that sound like a good idea to you or does that sound like trouble? It does, but it's it's still we're, we're still trying to still try to imitate uh, the people who own sheep in Europe. I think uh, you, you know it, it made it the the rich people own the sheep and the, the sheep kept the grass down, and um, so they could play croquet, um, and it sort of caught on as as a, a kind of a a strange uh, practice um, because it's a waste. I mean, we're, we're killing the microbes in the soil. I think that that adding clover is one. That's two species of of, but you know, nature loves a lot of species, and the the microbes of of one species help the other species. Uh, when they're in need, because each one ha has a, a different set of, of favored microbes. And so, so uh, there was an experiment in, in Germany, uh, still going on, where uh, they had two species, four species, one species, two, four, eight, up to 16. And um, it, it had been going on for like 20 years or something like that. It's called the Jena experiment, J-E-N-A, I believe. And um, they had a flood and they thought, oh, the whole place is ruined because it stayed on the, on the ground for quite a while. And they found that the, um, uh, the 16 variety uh, weathered the storm, weathered the, the flood, um, much better than anything else, the, and the monocrops kind of died out. So the idea there is that they help one another sequester more carbon. And so, so yeah, two species is better. Uh, you know, my dad used to put in uh, bluegrass and uh, clover. But, you know, why don't we have a little few strawberries or plantain or dandelions or something like that. Well, why isn't that okay? What's what's the deal? <laughs> anyway, yes, I think it's better. If we had two, it'd be better. Okay. Let, rant. Okay, no, no, no. I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, let's go. Let me go, digress a little bit. You know, we talked a minute and had a question about what's the difference between the EMC and this Climate Protection Steering Committee. And I think if we can be successful in encouraging the mayor to appoint more commissioners, what we might want to do is schedule another retreat like we've done in the past and really brainstorm with the new commissioners about the things, the ideas that they have to bring forward and how we can be supportive of what the city's doing environmentally in regard to the climate plan, but also in regard to other um, areas of city activity, you know, across the board. And so hopefully, again, I'm really, really wanting everybody to talk about getting appointments to the commission. Um, the next business is the liaison report. And I'm gonna quickly mention something that they reported on at the Air Quality Forum. They were talking about the electrification corridors that are um, coming out of the infrastructure plan. And evidently the goal is to have an electric charging facility every 50 miles on the interstates and on major federal highways and what they said that was interesting about it first is how frequent it would be but the other is that they want that built out they want to be sure and get those highways covered before they move on to something else um andy is that what you took away from all that Yep, you got it. I think what they say, they want a station every within every 50 miles of each other. Right. Yeah. 
And it couldn't just be one charger. It had to be four chargers, four connections. It was, it was interesting. When you look at the distances across Kansas, um, every 50 miles would be a change, even for a gas station some places. Are there any other reports from commissioners? I don't know where to mention this, but um, tell me if I, if we need to do it somewhere else. But um, I, I'm holding a meeting at uh, Rockhurst Community Center with two neighborhoods to uh, kind of explore the possibilities that they would have to help us collect leaves and create Johnson Sioux bioreactors and um, and then attend those for a year and then have them ready for the next year for uh, uh, spreading that material on the ground. Uh, two, two pounds of it would do an acre of, of soil. So one of these bioreactors would do several blocks. Um, so it wouldn't take one in every yard, but um, Anyway, so that's happening next uh, Friday, uh, next uh, Tuesday, uh, about seven o'clock at Rockhurst Community Center, and anybody is welcome to come. You don't have to be in the neighborhood, but I'm I'm picking the two neighborhoods that I'm affiliated with because of my garden, our garden, and and uh, and my home. So it seemed like a, a likely place to start. So, and we've got a a pickup a trailer to. Uh, and a, a leaf sucker and grinder that will suck the leaves up and and make them ready for for putting in the uh, the Johnson Sioux. And uh, so anyway, there's a whole lot to it. I won't go into any more than that. But um, there you go. Thank you. Do we have any old or new business to come before the commission? Do we have any remarks from visitors? Do some of you visitors want to apply to become commissioners? <laughs> you think I'm pushing this? No, no, I, I think go, go Carol, go. <laughs> Is there any other business to come before the commission? I think we may be having a quiet month here. Well, it happens. Well, and I think it, it we can all take a breather. I think it, especially Andy and his crew that have worked so hard, so tirelessly lately. And uh, yes, yes, that's what they deserve. Lots of applause, lots of applause. Um, well, let's move forward. We will have a more robust meeting next month, hopefully with new participants. Carol? Uh-huh. Just the last note, I did just send uh, the commissioners the amended uh, meeting, meeting minutes from last month. So in case you guys just want to look at those, it's been done. It got changed. So just want to make sure everybody knew that they're out there already in your email. Okay, that's great. I'm sure Carol will be reassured. That's something that we need to be you know, cautious about how we represent um, people's views. Um, anything else? Thank you, Marlene. Yeah, you guys are quiet. Yeah, it really is quiet. I think I think you're ready for dinner. <laughs> we can we can say good night and good wishes. I can I can add something real quick. Oh, please um, do. Part of the Andy was talking a bit earlier about the grants the city's going for and so on and so forth. One of the big things though is um, you know this is a community based climate plan so. Uh, 
commissioners, those of you on the call, if there are some wish list projects that you think that the city needs to have a partnership piece or a voice in or can lead and you've got community partners ready to go and move on it, please let me know about it because even if um, even if it's not something our office can carry, we do have a, a Fuse fellow that's in the office right now whose job is is grants, grants, and more grants, and just trying to pull in as much federal money as we can into Kansas City. So um, we can route it to the right people. It may not go anywhere, but you also may get a call and, and we'll move forward. And Marty, just so you know, we are looking at the farm bill for trees and possibly soils and also brownfields for soils um, and remediating and, and rebuilding soils in the urban core. So. We are looking at soils. I just wanted to let you know. Yeah, good. Well, I hope you're looking at it because we're consumers of of agricultural products, and and sometimes you know since we're not directly into agriculture, we still are directly into agriculture because we eat it. Well, yeah, and the farm bill actually has a lot for urban farms from a resiliency perspective. There's money set aside for urban urban farming and money set aside for urban trees. So, I mean, in the farm bill. So we're we're definitely trying to pull both those angles. Okay. Hey, so so Laura, uh, maybe a little more discussion there. I'm, you know, does the does the grant writers or a city group or something have a have some good summary information of the different areas that are in those bills? Um, where I'm coming from is, you know, a coworker and I have spent a little bit of time, but certainly not exhausted ourselves on finding what we can about some summaries of of the different areas within, you know, some of those uh, some of those pieces. But you know, it it is a little overwhelming, and wasn't sure where you guys were working on that, and um, if maybe if there's any kind of a work group involved in kind of pouring through these things and, or, you know, I don't know, what, what are, what are y'all seeing on your end, I guess? And most of it, I, I don't know about Andy, but most of it I'm getting from organizations in that space. Um, so like urban forest initiative and things like that gave us information on the farm bill. I, I probably have some fact sheets and I'd be happy to forward on all the ones I have to the EMC. Um, if you would be interested in looking over them, they're a lot easier to digest than the full bills themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, just I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate that. That sounds great. Um, right, yeah. Go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, you know, I, I've, I've got, um, well, not, <laughs> not a simple fact sheet, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm looking for those kinds of resources. <laughs> yeah, and I was just going to say that the um, those resources, yeah, are, we do pick those up in various um, relationships we have with some of these groups. But the grant writers that um, I was referencing are are actually um, contractors that the city contracted with. They they did do an RFP back a couple of months ago uh, um, in anticipation of this coming down. So uh, they went through an RP process and a selection process to come up with two vendors um, to provide the, the, these grant writing services. So um, I still kind of need to connect with them directly and just kind of see how how do they go about vetting these opportunities for the city and particularly for our interests. So that, that's that still needs to be done. They, they fairly recently uh, under contract with us, but we have one, I believe one local firm and then one from um, the East Coast, uh, both of which uh, have some uh, experience in this area. So, Gary? Um, with regard to the um, <clears throat> possibility of grants for trees, I would respectfully suggest that it might be appropriate for us to have a tree ordinance uh, in place uh, to at least have a policy we could refer to. Jerry, there are several people up the chain that agree wholeheartedly. So this, that's all I can say at this point. <laughs> well, I remember when the, the Dutch elm disease hit and we were promised trees. Uh, 
and uh, turns out my father and I, after 10 or 15 years, planted trees uh, in the parkway um, because it never happened. So um, I suggest that people could dig up the trees that are next to the fence and haul them out to the park into the parkway and plant them. And if they're too too big, too bad, <laughs> or if they're whatever, you know, I mean, the right tree in the right place is really nice. But uh, anyway, you are I, welcome I to all the oaks and maples in my front yard, Marty. <laughs> the little ones. Yes, yes. Thank you. It's a it's a nice gesture. I mean, we could do a whole lot for cutting down the heat island effect. And the heat island effect doesn't just affect our comfort in the city, it also heats the planet. And, you know, that's my beef with agriculture is they leave too much ground fallow cooking the microbes that would sequester the carbon with, with the aid of the plants. Anyway, I, you know, talking, 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 talking to the ocean. <laughs> Well, and yeah, um, I, th I think I sent you all a, a, a map that I came across a week ago showing the one of the predictions for the for the region in the future, um, you know, showing a number of hundred degree exceedances expected by yeah. whatever date, you know, so yeah. I mean, that also complicates the questions of, you know, what do you plant that's that's a species that that, that survives and thrives and you know as, as things move around well you know but there's a, there's also the thing if we would get on the on the ball and and re and change our agricultural practices now we might cool the planet and while we're drawing down carbon we'll be having moisture uh, participate in in the climate as it did in the past when we had real healthy soils that held lots of water. So, you know, I mean, it, I, see the, I see the forecast, but that's capitulating to the idiocy of climate change. I mean, we did it. And if we could, if we could work with the microbes and the plants, possibly we could undo it, you know. There you are. <laughs> I'm a no, good school. No. Sure, sure. Good yeah. discussion. I yeah. agree. I think we ought to get get on the ball. Well, I'm going to call the meeting, and I we like. and we will get together again next month. Hopefully, more of us. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Carol. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.